Hey guys, as we look uh, at Memorial Day and we, we take time to honor the people who have laid down their lives for our nation, for, for our freedom, uh, looking back a little bit at the history of Memorial Day, uh, it really started in the, the Civil War where there were different towns and communities who wanted to honor people from their town, their community, their family who, who had lost their lives in the Civil War. And it became known as Decoration Day back in 1868. Uh, actually, James Garfield gave a speech at the first Decoration Day, and they were remembering the lives of those lost in the Civil War, which was nearly 700,000 people who lost their lives during the Civil War. As history moved forward, when you got to World War I, at that point, there were a lot of Americans losing their lives in World War I, and every year there was Decoration Day, but it was really looking back to the Civil War, and so it occurred to somebody that maybe we should remember all of those who have fallen in all wars in America. And at this point, America's been in a lot of wars since back at the Civil War. Yeah, and just to further note, Decoration Day referred to going and decorating the graves of those fallen soldiers. So they would bring crosses, wreaths, flowers, anything to kind of honor and remember the sacrifices of those troops who died. So that's where the name Decoration mm -hmm. Day actually comes from. And so, right, obviously by the time you get to World War I, you've had the Spanish-American War. You know, there's been several wars up to that point, but obviously after World War I, you get to World War II. And so in the 70s, that's where they change it from Remembrance Day to Memorial Day, and that's kind of the origins of this modern day of mm. remembrance, where we honor the sacrifices of those people who came before us. And um, that's kind of a brief history mm. of Memorial Day. And, and this is something that us the last Monday in May is when Memorial Day is honored, remembering those who've laid down their life. And, and, and certainly, Jonathan, as you mentioned, there's been a, a lot of wars. And actually, uh, I mean, it's kind of cool at Wall Builders, we have a lot of artifacts f dealing with military history from some of those wars and even from some of the Medal of Honor recipients and some of the heroes from those wars. And one of the things that we do know about freedom is, is there's a very high price for freedom and maintaining freedom. And one of the things the Bible tells us is, is greater love has no one than this, and he lays down his life for his friend. And it's one of the things that we do want to acknowledge those that have laid down their life in, the, in this incredible gesture for freedom for the rest of us. And uh, we actually have several friends at Wall Builders who are, are military veterans and who have been in some pretty unique scenarios and situations. So we want to share an interview we had the chance to do with one of our very good friends, Brian Birdwell, as he tells part of his story and the way he remembers Memorial Day. Today we have joining us Lieutenant Colonel Brian Birdwell, retired. He's now a state senator in Texas. Uh, we're so proud to have him in the state of Texas, but he is someone who survived the 9-11 attack. And as we look at Memorial Day and, and we talk about remembering Memorial Day and really what that entails and how as Americans, the, the things that we enjoy, the freedoms and privileges we enjoy as Americans is because so many have laid down their lives. Lieutenant Colonel Birdwell is going to help know, help us know some, some of those details, some of that story, um, and really kind of bring us in a loop. So first of all, Brian, thank you so much for being here. My treat. My treat. Uh, he's been a family friend for many, many years. We actually uh, have pictures going all the way back to the, shortly after the terror attacks mm -hmm. um, up in, I think, Washington, D.C. Yeah. Um, with you when you had many bandages on. Uh, yeah, I, I look like the Michelin man in the hospital. Yeah. I, I, well, I, yeah. actually, kind of put it in context, <laughs> Colonel's been through 50, 60 50, surgeries? 50 now, yes. Sir. 50 surgeries. And, and so, I, I mean, we've got pictures of you when you were in the hospital. You had no skin on your arms at all. Everything was muscle and, and flat. It was just, yeah. you know, you should have died. As you said, you look pretty good for a guy that got run over by 757. Yeah. So the plane literally came across you. You're, com you're covered with jet fuel. And, and the plane we're talking about is... Yeah. On 9-11, if you want to walk yeah. us through some of those details sure. for people that might not remember. Sure. Um, I was serving in the Pentagon that morning, uh, just a, a galley slave uh, on the Army staff. Uh, Flight 77 is deliberately crashed into the Pentagon at, at the intersection of the fourth quarter and the E-ring, um, uh, about 15 to 20 yards from where I was located. I had actually uh, stepped out to go to the men's restroom, uh, told Sandy and Cheryl, my two co-workers that were killed uh, at impact of the, of the aircraft. Um, uh, by the Lord's grace, uh, uh, survived miraculously, but went through, uh, I mean, I should have been killed. I mean, uh, when you're 15 to 20 yards from the nose of the aircraft that that uh, is impacting the building at 530 miles an hour, um, the impact should have killed me, the flame, the smoke, all those things. Um, uh, the Lord is the great physician, and uh, and that's why we're still here. Uh, but it, it the, the primary focus is as with the story as it relates to September 11th is just the 
the suffering. I mean, nobody expects to go to, to, to the Pentagon and, and earn a Purple Heart, but, um, but it gives you a, a greater zest for understanding the sacrifices made by uh, by so many. I mean, I'd I'd been in the first Gulf War, you know, in the mud and the rain and the and the uh, uh, the, the conditions that uh, that the, the soldier uh, experiences. Um, I've been through all that, um, but when you're so physically damaged, so physically injured, you know, whether it's the loss of a limb or burns or that shared suffering, uh, brings a greater passion for uh, uh, for those liberties. Yeah, and, and Brian, I think for, for a lot of Americans, uh, Memorial Day is a celebrated three-day weekend, um, you know, where it really, yeah. for most Americans, is kind of a celebration where we celebrate America. We love America. There's barbecues. Yeah. There's, there's the lake. But obviously, for so many, it, it's, it's not a celebration because there was a loss of life. And even though good-hearted people, right, obviously nobody's probably trying to be disrespectful in their celebrations, but we just don't think about the lives that it costs for us to be able to be free, maybe to even have that celebration. Yeah. So as, as a military veteran, as someone who lost many people throughout the course of your career, obviously still know people involved in the process, um, yeah. still know people whose lives are lost, how do you look at Memorial Day? Well, I, I, uh, I, I look at it as, as it was, uh, to, to coin a phrase, original intent. Uh, it started as Decoration Day to mm -hmm. decorate the, uh, the, the graves of, of uh, Civil War veterans. And then with the advent of World War I, uh, it became a, uh, a more widely um, celebra celebrated, is, is not really the right word, memorialized right. day. Um, you decorate the, uh, the graves of those that had, uh, uh, had now deceased. Um, there is no delineation between those that served but weren't wounded or, or died in combat, but have now deceased. Like my, both my grandfathers served in World War I. Uh, we decorate their, 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 uh, their graves, even though neither were killed in World War I. One was, was uh, uh, ser seriously wounded, but um, too many Americans, because only about 1% of our population ever put on the uniform, um, too many Americans don't have a, a loved one or a family member that's uh, at the time of, of, of their existing now that served. Um, so there's not that, that knowledge of veterans or, or those that have served. There's somebody that's a grandfather mm -hmm. or a great uncle or a, you know, during World War II or Korea, um, maybe Vietnam, but uh, going back into to World War I as well. And so um, we want it to be a day of, of honoring the, the men and women from the Revolutionary War forward that have paid the price to earn and keep uh, the freedoms from threats in a, in a fallen symbol. Let me kind of put that in perspective too because you said only about 1% of the people have served. Yeah. Um, over the course of our history from all the way back, there's about 54 million people who put on the uniform. Mm -hmm. About 1.2 million have died as a result of wearing the uniform. And so if you're looking at 54 million as 1% of all Americans have worn it, you're looking at a very small percentage of that who actually is, is lost their lives saving ours, which really is Memorial Day. I mean, they're, they're the ones we really focus at is that 1.2 million. Yeah. And that's, those are the key guys. Because yeah. I, want, I want Americans, I, I, I don't want anybody watching this show to think that they ought to feel guilty having that barbecue or being sure. on the lake. Yeah, that's right. But as you're enjoying that freedom, Think about those that, yeah. have, that have paid that price. In fact, driving over here this morning, uh, it's raining, which is perfect Army weather. You know, it doesn't rain in the Army. It rains on the Army. But uh, there were two, uh, two young men, and I, I blinked my headlights at them because they were just to, to say hey and thank you, but they were wearing rucksacks, had flags uh, sticking out of the back of the rucksacks, and they're walking, facing traffic. They're walking on the right side of the road, uh, but uh, doing a road march of some type. Uh, for Memorial Day, and uh, you know, in my hometown of Granbury, we've got the Field of Flags, and you know, a lot of different flags that are up, and and uh, you know, it's not just quote decoration, but it's it's honoring and remembering, and in doing so, uh, the 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 actual rules of the flag are for Memorial Day, the flag is at half staff till noon, then raised at full staff uh, in the afternoon. That's the actual 
uh, general order that goes with the, with the flag etiquette on Memorial Day. It's not at half mass the whole day. So recognize, honor, remember, and then enjoy those liberties in the, yeah. in the other half of the day that, uh, that those men and women out there that, well, that's interesting. that are interred. I, yeah. I didn't know the flag etiquette yeah. was half <laughs> and then full at the end of the day. I, I, I don't know how I missed that <laughs> along the way. Uh, it's interesting, but, but certainly one of the things that we look at uh, at Memorial Day, there's a, a verse from the Gospel of John where greater love has no man than this, and he laid yeah. down his life for his friends. And I think, especially in a nation where Christianity has so impacted and shaped and molded the nation along yep. our journey, to see in a military people who are willing to lay down their lives in defense yep. of families and in defense of their loved ones, defense of people they don't even know. Yep. There, there is such a parallel in a senior subordinate way, not a equality in the sense of, but you know, even you know, th there's no such thing as a casualty-free conflict. As much as we might like to, you know, not have any loss of life uh, of, uh, of Americans, that's not the standard. Um, even in the Lord's war for the redemption of mankind required one very special casualty. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord subordinated himself to the Father. The men and women that have un worn the uniform have subordinated themselves to the collective will of the, of the people as expressed by uh, those in, in governmental leadership at the time. They've subjected themselves to indignities. Uh, I've, I've a constituent that recently passed but was a prisoner of war for two years in North Korea along the Yalu River. Um, I've met a, a gentleman that was pulled out of the USS Oklahoma on December 8th, wow. so the, uh, many years ago. So the numbers, the suffering and the, and the sacrifice and the separation from family, you know, at Christ's, at Christ's death on the cross, there's that three days of separation of having known uh, uh, the perfection of a relationship with God. Uh, the Father uh, for that th for those three days. So the, there's a number of parallels, and eventually, um, even after Christ's death on the cross, uh, he was interred in a tomb uh, by Joseph of Arimathea. We've got whether it's at Arlington National Cemetery or all our military installations here in, in the Dallas Fort Worth area, the DFW uh, Veterans Cemetery, where those that have suffered an indignity suffered at the hands of a hostile enemy, are interred with respect for the service and sacrifice that they've given. And that's what Memorial Day is about. And that's why there's such an incredible parallel of Christ's sacrifice uh, and our men and women in uniform sacrifice, though not for an eternal cause. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not parallel in that sense, but, um, but the, the nature of the stories is similar. Yeah. For, for people who want to know more of your story, I know you've done a lot of interviews. Um, you have a great I Am Second video, um, which it, is out there. It's a hard one, actually. That was a hard one to do. Uh, but it's a, it's a great video. If you go to I Am Second, uh, type in Birdwell, and, and uh, uh, it's graphic. Um, it doesn't show you anything graphic, but it describes uh, very graphically what, uh, what happened that day. And you also have a great book. Which we, is do. we do, we uh, do. Refined by fire. Uh, I think you can get it at uh, on, on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I th it's um, it's not in print anymore, but there are still some copies that Tyndale has that uh, you can get through Amazon. I think so. So as you mentioned, when you were at the Pentagon, you never expect to get a Purple Heart. Yeah, no. It, it it's something of a of a of a feeling of inadequacy when I'm visiting with fellow veterans and they ask me what I was doing when I got my Purple Heart, and I say I was coming out of the men's restroom. That's just not really, you know, you know, for for guys that were clearing buildings in Fallujah, you know, that's kind of what you know. So, so for for probably people today, if let's say. They're, they're looking at Memorial Day and to give them a perspective of, of some of the ways that loss of life might still happen in the military today. We still have soldiers yep. that are overseas that are yep. in, engaged in different areas. Um, can you shed light on where people are still laying down their life for Americans for freedom today? Well, it, it's still occurring in, uh, uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I know that that troop presence is decreasing. Um, uh, certainly support the president's uh, decisions that, he, that he's making as it relates to Afghanistan standing on its own. Um, there are uh, folks, uh, the, the manner in which we were able to get General Soleimani 
Um, there were special operators on the ground there, and I, I don't know who, and I don't sure. know the, you know, you're, you're talking things that are, are highly classified, but there are folks uh, uh, scattered in various places for, for the interests of, uh, of American citizens uh, in our nation. Um, and then uh, we still have uh, servicemen and women on the Korean Peninsula. I served in 84 to 86 uh, in uh, the western corridor of, uh, of the Korean Peninsula, and there's still a number of uh, troops there. There are still uh, uh, Americans in, uh, in Europe. Now we have some in Eastern Europe. We've got Americans in Poland. We've got Americans in, in what is tr was traditionally Western Europe before the wall came down. Um, not as large of a presence, um, but we still live in a fallen, dangerous world. Mm -hmm. um, the accoutrements of war have changed between the Peloponnesian Wars, which was the first recorded world war. It was the, the known world at the time all the way to now. The accoutrements change, but the principles of war haven't. Um, and uh, we live in a fallen, sinful world, and there are threats to Americans and threats to our interests, and, and we want to make sure that uh, our enemies have very serious reason to pause and think, kind of like what we did with uh, General Soleimani that's recalculating what's going on in Tehran right now, mm -hmm. um, uh, thank goodness. Um, but. Uh, they're all over the world, and, and submarines in, in the in the Pacific and the Atlantic, and you know other places that uh, we will reach out and touch you if you uh, if because uh, the military's job is to preserve those life, liberty, yeah. pursuit of happiness. Um, we will have our arguments internally about what our domestic policies will be, but if you threaten the United States, it'll be at the peril of your life. That's simple. <laughs> <laughs> and that is one of many reasons we are so grateful for the military. Um, Brian, your life has been such an a incredible testimony um, for, for those of us that, that know the story. If, if you don't know the story, I would encourage you, go to the I Am Second video. As Brian mm -hmm. mentioned, that there, there is some graphic details because as, as you talk about being covered by jet fuel and, and what you felt and what you were experiencing and all that was running through your head and the process. I mean, that there's some intense and graphic moments uh, in this, and we praise God mm -hmm. that you're alive. Yep. As you mentioned, he was a great yep. physician yep. for you. Absolutely. Um, yep. A lot of it didn't make sense that you were able to overcome on multiple levels all that you went through. But again, mm -hmm. I, I Am Second, um, or a great book, Refined by Fire, that you also can find on Amazon. Yep. Um, but we are so grateful for all of the yep. men and women that serve, for all the yep. military, yep. As, yep. as we, as you mentioned, yeah. internally try to figure out how to make America better. Yeah. Part of the reason we can do that is because of our military. Yeah. The only the only other thing I would add is is, 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 is relates to Refined by Fire is it's Mel's story too. She actually does most of the writing in there. And so it's a great story. Mel is your wife. Right, Mel is Mel is my, my wife. Um, your adult supervision. My adult supervision right. for the last 33 years. Uh, we celebrated our 33rd anniversary. Congratulations. Uh, two weeks ago. Um, but it, it also is, particularly for those service members that were married, the separation and the, and the things, that, because it's not just those that have fallen in battle, yeah. but the families that have paid that price yeah. too. And, yeah. that's a, and, and that's a great story of, of what families endure uh, simultaneously to what the service member endures. Thank you for it. Thank you also now for transferring over your political leadership because all the experience you have, the love for the country, the love for America, the disciplines you learned are very appreciated in, in the legislative area as well. So thank you for that. We appreciate Hua, it. You've taught me a lot. So you're, you're the one that helps make me a formidable opponent on the debate floor. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your service. My treat. Thank you. And, and we're so grateful as you, as you look today, as we honor Memorial Day, I'd encourage you, as, as Brian just pointed out, not only remember the lives that were laid down and sacrificed, but the family members. Say a prayer today for, for those who lost loved ones, for those surviving members as they're now having to navigate life in a different way. Um, yeah. And we are so grateful for, for all of the men and women watching who are in uniform, for all the veterans. We're so grateful for you signing up and suiting up to keep us safe and free. We're praying for you. God bless you. And we remember on Memorial Day.